Welcome to Movash Public Library. Did you kill him? Kill who? What? No! The ghoul? Hmm. Maybe I misjudged you. Well, we may have killed him and then rewound time. I don't remember. It was very confusing down there. Shakespeare will be happy. He's got a sentimental attachment to Eddie. Oh yeah, this was the other guy that was in the store. Reader! This is the other guy that was in the library. I was trying to remember who he was. I'm sorry. I came to tell you that Shakespeare's got a special mission for you. Ooh. You coming with me? No. Good. I've got some hunting to do. Good luck. I'll see you back at the library. I'm, we're, we're back at the library. Oh, no, he's going hunting. There he goes. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, we're back. Oh, books are falling off the shelf. That, we got so many of them, just cramming them everywhere. Got so many books. Doesn't it? Hey, look, Grey's Anatomy. Isn't that a TV show? So we'll just grab that for her. I was expecting something to happen, and I remember that nothing is... Oh, well, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. She wanted that one, too. Oh, you've got so many useful books. Yep, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That one's a... It's, it's not a bad book. It's a little... Anything written by Hunter S. Thompson is, is difficult. Hey, on the road! What do you oh, think? wait, what do you know? All of the books she wants are oh, here! crazy! Oh, weird! Oh, no, wait, that one... Just, that, that can just stay there. That's a waste on Yeah. Ah, uh, you're special. Ah, uh, good one. Catch her in the rye. Yep, there we go. Got that one, too. Got that one, too. Tumblers today. Picking lockpicks? Ah, uh, you already know everything about that. Uh -huh. Oh, Ender's Game. She wanted that book. And there's another copy of Ender's Game. We don't need two copies. No, no, no. We're not greedy. Uh, hey. So, what happened? Okay, so we got your book. And Eddie's still alive. But probably not for much longer. I'm so glad you didn't have to. I was worried. Thank you. I know I could trust you. Well, we built up quite a reputation. So Helen is your adopted daughter, Eddie is family, and Reader is two, isn't he? That's really strangely written. Why do I... I don't sense... Do we sense a trend? Do we? I understand your confusion. Being a smoothie, you might have a family. A biological family. We ghouls don't. We all lost ours a long time ago. Pretty no, I heard about a ghoul family that the kid was trapped in a fridge for 200 years. Some of us build families around us. Eddie is my little brother. I love him. Making him leave hurt, but I couldn't put Helen in danger. Helen is another story. One that I'm not prepared to share. But you're a library. Sharing stories is what you do. Read her, though. He helped us when we needed it. He's become both protector and friend. Anyway, Reader said you wanted to see me. Why don't you go see the hermit? The, the hermit? He's got attack of the lunch ladies. The old what? fool has it up on a mountain. I'll mark your map. The, oh, Just the book. try not to hurt him. Attack of the lunch ladies. Okay. Okay, that sounds like a dumb book, but I'll go find him. Thanks. And I'll never forget what you did for me and Eddie. Oh, well, where's Helen? Ever since you took her for that walk, she's been going out. I know it was just a little thing, but it was a catalyst for her. You never know how a small kindness will affect someone. She visits Cliff at the store, and Dr. Strauss has taken an interest in her. That's not a good thing. No bark follows her around like a puppy. That's weird. She spends most of her time with the ranchers across the street, though. I think they're trying to steal her. Well, okay, I'm kind of surprised. You thought something bad might befall Shakespeare, but maybe something bad befalls Helen instead. Have a good trip. Any other books around here? Oh, wait, there's one. There's one. It's The Grapes of Wrath. Definitely take that one. And, uh, The Flowers for Algernon. Oh, whoa, 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 Yep, that's the firing rate of an MG3. We're gonna we're gonna skip over the fact that the loading animation is wrong because I have an MG42 and I don't care. Okay. There's a reason that it was colloquially known as Hitler's buzzsaw. There are U.S. military training videos from World War II that are basically like, yeah, this thing sounds really scary, but don't be too scared of it. it it's more bark than bite, and it's U.S. propaganda because it's not more bark than bite. It's also bark and bite. It's bark and bite. It's a lot of bark and bite. On the MG-34, this heat shield is round, and it's one solid, round thing. Mm -hmm. 
and it just has a bunch of holes drilled in it, which I know you love. Yes. The MG42, it's made square, and it has a bunch of holes in it. They all got holes in it. They're stamped in it. It's for cooling. I mean, basically, the whole purpose of this is it's a heat shield. Also, the bipod is missing from this gun, which is interesting. It got damaged, so they removed it. I I guess. On any high-volume-of-fire machine gun, you really want to have a way to change barrels quickly. When the, when the barrel starts getting too hot, you start losing accuracy because the barrel's expanding, so the bullets aren't actually meshing with the rifling anymore. Yeah, it's starting to rattle around on the barrel. It kind of. It just basically, it means your accuracy starts going out the window. So after, after a certain amount of rounds fired, you want to change barrels on them. The thing that's interesting about the MG34 is the way it works is the whole barrel shroud assembly... You basically pop that forward, and this whole thing hinges outwards, and the barrel slides out through the back. It's so crazy that you have a gun with a detachable barrel. I don't, I don't know how often I've seen that. Have you seen a two four nine or a two forty Bravo? I guess I have. Then yeah. you've seen it. I, I, Those both have detachable barrels. I guess I've they have just, quick change barrels on I've them. I've never seen the barrels be usually with machine guns when they're issued out to soldiers. Generally, they're issued the machine gun and then one to sometimes upwards of four spare barrels. Huh. The easiest way to tell the difference between an MG34 and an MG42, this part right here, the barrel and shroud assembly or heat shield assembly, MG34 is round, MG42 is square. That's the easiest way to tell the difference between the two of them. Gotcha. And then if it's in a different caliber, it's three. It's the MG3. Mm. Yeah. I just can't get over the fact that it's got a detachable barrel. Like, you're yeah. already swapping out belts of ammo. Yeah. So, man, how many more parts do you need to constantly be supplying this thing? The bar- the the things that... Having quick-change barrels on a belt-fed machine gun is something that is necessary because, as I said, when you get into high volumes of fire, and I'm talking, like, two to 3,000 rounds, you're firing in just, like, long strings of ammo, mm. that barrel's going to get real hot to the point that it's going to start glowing. I have literally used a machine gun to cook bacon before. <laughs> I wrapped bacon in aluminum foil and shoved it in between the heat shield and the barrel and just fired it a whole bunch and it cooked it cooked the bacon for me. Not sure that's the best way to do cooking. No, it's a terrible way to cook bacon, but it's fun. At least I can say that I've cooked bacon with a machine gun. All right. You, you know what's something else I've done with a machine gun that you're not supposed to do with a machine gun? Uh, I... I cut down a tree with one. Okay. Yeah. I shot at a tree with a 50 caliber machine gun until it fell down. Okay, I guess you can do that. You're yeah. a lumberjack now. Yeah, the tree made me a lumberjack. I can understand having spare parts around in case they get damaged, but the fact that you have to swap out the barrel when it inevitably overheats almost feels like it's a design flaw. No, it's it's not a design flaw. It's a very good thing because it's going to overheat. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're firing a lot a lot of rounds, it's going to overheat. You can you can get around the quick change barrel feature by doing more s- slower, more controlled burst. But sometimes, you just gotta throw a 300-round belt in there and then just keep doing, like, 10-round bursts at things. Sometimes mm. you just gotta lay down a lot of suppressive fire, and then you're gonna have to change barrels. The nice thing about this one, with the quick-change barrel being on this side, is that if you have one or two assistant gunners, if you have an assistant gunner who's doing a real good job supplying you with ammo, keeping this thing fed, he can come to the other side of the machine gun, pop that thing open... <laughs> swap a new barrel into it like really it is fast it's like a change. nascar pit stop your yeah, gun <laughs> it kind of is like this thing you can change barrels on this fast it's it's real you basically pop that lever forward ba- barrel will basically go thunk and pop out you can grab onto it with like an asbestos glove rip the barrel out slap a new one in there slam it closed hit the gunner on the back of the head and now you're ready to go i would certainly hope you can swap out barrels fast if that's what you have to do to use the gun yeah and then you know your your your, now your barrel is just cooling down while you wait for it to be you wait for it to be ready your barrel has cooled down enough and now it's ready to go isn't the person who's swapping out your barrel gonna burn themselves on your uh super hot charged barrel that's why that's why usually the assistant gunner's kit will include some type of oven mitts yeah basically (laughs) yeah when i when i handle suppressors or machine guns on a regular basis i literally get an of glove i go to the store and i buy an of glove (laughs) which is just a high temperature glove and I just use that to handle everything. I, I quite literally have a hot pad <laughs> that is made by Mechanics. The company that makes Mechanics gloves, mm-hmm. it's it's made by them specifically for handling suppressors. I have a little bag. <laughs> it's basically just an envelope that you can just shove a suppressor into, and it's made of high-temperature material so I don't melt my gun case. Okay. 
you say that's weird, but the early machine guns, literally part of the BII for early machine guns was a water jug. When you look at early machine guns, you'll notice that the barrel looks like it's huge. And the barrel isn't actually huge. It's a massive heat shroud that is filled with water. Because the barrels on the early machine guns were actually relatively thin. <laughs> what they would do is they would put a thin barrel in there and just surround it with water. A water cool your barrel. Yep. They are just all like water cooled guns. It was really only when they started putting machine guns on airplanes that they were like, oh shit, we can air cool these things. Okay. It's, it's weird. A lot of these early machine guns where they're trying to figure out how to do like air cooling and stuff is weird. And then they, they realized that you can reduce a lot of bulk from a machine gun by getting rid of these weird air cooling and water cooling jackets. Just get rid of that and just put a quick change barrel in it. Yeah, but now you're carrying around four or five spare barrels? Which, water weighs a lot, man. Uh, okay, fair enough. Fair. Four spare barrels weighs a lot less than carrying around six gallons of water to keep pouring into your machine gun. That's actually fair. So, yeah. The machine gunner, the guy carrying this thing, isn't the one carrying all the spare barrels. Oh, some poor guy. The MG42 was designed to work with a team of, let's say, four soldiers. You have the gunner, you have the assistant gunner, and a support gunner and a support gunner. Mm. The AG and the two support gunners are probably each carrying a barrel. The assistant gunner is probably carrying a bunch of ammo, and then the two support gunners are also probably carrying ammo. I see. You have an entire machine gun team dedicated to keeping this thing shooting bullets at people. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be easier just to have four people with their own firearms? So, yes, you could just give them rifles. But then now, now basically what you have is you have one guy with a machine gun who is trying to do the entire machine gun thing by itself. And it's a crew-served weapon. Well, I'm saying instead of having one machine gun team, you have four people with assault rifles. And they're putting roughly the same bullets downwind, and also they can't singularly get picked off because there's four of them? They didn't really have assault rifles when Combat Doctrine was developed around this. So you're saying we've moved past machine guns? No, we still we still use general purpose machine guns. Like, to this day, we still use general purpose machine guns. Just the way they are utilized in combat has vastly changed from the way Germans were using them in World War II. I guess those three people that are supporting the machine gun can still support the machine gun in between swapping out barrels and swapping out ribbons of ammo. They don't have to be sitting there waiting for the barrel to get hot. They can put a few rounds yeah, downrange. Yeah, they can They can still be doing, like, supporting fire, which is something that does happen is, you know, you've got the AG, who basically, the AG, his job is just to keep this thing fed. And the other guys are the other guys carrying are, ammo, really. The other guys are carrying ammo. They're maybe linking more belts together to give to the AG. They're maybe getting a barrel ready to shoot the machine gun. But in the, ta in the time between doing that stuff, you're probably multitasking and occasionally taking pot shots at the enemy. So That makes so much sense. The MG42 is one of my favorite machine guns. Just the fact that it is still in service today as the MG3 is incredible to me. It's like, <laughs> they, they did it right. The first time. Well, third time. I mean, they, they did it so right that all they had to do was change the caliber. And change the shape of the barrel. Well, that was the MG-34, which is a different gun. Okay. Uh, is it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's a, the MG-34 is a different gun. It uses a similar operating principle, but it is a vastly different gun. Oh, all right. Yeah. The way the barrel comes out is different. The way a lot of the internals work is different. Interesting fact, when they went to the MG-42, the MG-34 was actually still in use in tanks. So the reason that they used the MG-34 on tanks was because you needed way less space to be able to change barrels on it. Mm. Space is a premium inside a tank. Yeah. You it had some advantages. You don't need as much space. And also, if it's inside a tank, it's not going to get covered in as much mud as it would if you're a soldier running around and falling down and dropping your machine gun. Unless the tank in front of you peeled out really fast. Yeah, unless they do a burnout. Just do like a, <laughs> get a stug right in front of you. Just doing a sick burnout. Just, and then the entire time they're playing like Thug Life. And then the stug driver is just going, I didn't choose a stug life. The stug life chose me. And he pops a wheelie. Weep! I guess it'd be more of a tready. Tready? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love this machine gun. The fact that militaries are still using the MG42 just as the rechambered in 308 as the MG3 is incredible to me. It's always crazy when a gun is designed right the first time. And so, so many machine guns owe their lineage directly to the MG42. Like the M60 basically wholesale copied the MG42 <laughs> feed tray cover. All right. They are like almost identical in terms of how they work on the inside. The feed system is very similar between the 240 and the MG42. They they just they just nailed it. 
All right. Shall we go use it to secure a book? This machine gun is... Woo! Hello. <laughs> this machine gun is so prolific, and they made so many of them, and they're so effective that I saw them... I straight up saw them still... World War II issued MG42s being confiscated and used in Iraq. Wow. We just uh, passed by a plasma weapon, I think, back when we oh were... Oh my god, yeah, that's been here forever. That's the... Yep, that's, a, that's the plasma weapon marker. When we were with Stimpak, the oh robot god. companion. <laughs> and, oh, there's more. There's a couple more. <laughs> we fought an entire army up here. <laughs> ah, plasma weapons. Those are the markings that Stimpak has been here. Be careful in the shade. Scorpions like to hide out in the dark during the hottest parts of the day. That's good advice. Oh! Yeah, admiring the beautiful world. Who... Who the hell are you? Uh... My name's Zack. Never heard of ya. Now go back to from where you came. Look, man, I came all the way up here to see you. At least you could just be civil about it. All right, please get the hell off my rock. And be careful. Everything is just how I like it. What? Everything? Whatever, fine. I don't care. I need to ask you something. Is that okay? Oh, go on. I doubt I can stop oh, you. Oh, wise hermit of the mountain. Um, uh, you ever hear Shakespeare? A ghoul, tall and thin, likes to wear suits? Yes. Never heard of him. Great. Why don't we keep this short? I just want a book. The book. That's it? Just the book? Yep. No retribution? retribution. Where is he? What did you do to him? It, it's just me here. Give me the book. Sure. Here. I wanted to get rid of this thing for so long, but I was afraid. Thank afraid you. I wouldn't have enough toilet paper. Thanks, you old loon. Old ain't the half of it. How old? Let's see. Six, forty-six, eleven, minus nine, add grapefruit. Hmm. Math not a strong suit. Carry the cucumber makes one hundred thirty-five. Yep, one hundred thirty-five tears old. Y you mean years? Sure, if you say so. Great. Well, you're in a remarkable shape. In fact, you almost look jacked for being 135. Clean living and pure thoughts, and I never do anything I enjoy. <laughs> That's... that sounds awful. Is it... what about... is there a reason that you're naked? Just wash your hands before you eat. Great. How long have you been up here? 82 years. 82 years, huh? What the hell would make you hot up here for so long? Big hairy things, little scaly things, and soft curvy things with sharp teeth. Those are called women? <laughs> I was trying to be cryptic. <laughs> I see. You need to get out more. You need to get out more or in oh, or in more. That's gross. <laughs> You asking? No. See what I mean? <laughs> you see the lights at night from up here? Yeah. Don't go there, youngster. You'll burn up in radioactive vapor. The strip, yes. That's, you might not... You might burn up, but not in vapor. <laughs> what? What is the... Star Rip? It's like a giant party, only there's, you can only hear the people. You can't actually see any of them walking around because the engine doesn't really have the capacity to render that many people at once. I wasn't invited. Never am. Couldn't find you to give you the invitation. I... I can go? Yeah, you just go there, man. How's this? Those are clothes, technically. That's fine. Make sure you wash them before you go to the strip. Thank you, oh, young one. <laughs> I might see you there. You need 2,000 caps, by the way. Forgot to mention that part. Take this and have fun. 2,000 caps. You never know how a good deed will be repaid. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, bye. bye. 
Bye. Guess we're not gonna kill... Okay, n next book we'll kill somebody for it. Man, I didn't even get to use the machine gun. Oh, you got a secretary now! How was the country? I... Did the old hermit still have my book? You didn't hurt him, did you? No, we gave him money! He thought I was there to kill him? Why do you- why is he so afraid of you? I can't imagine why he thought that. Why? <sighs> you sketchy. You little sketchy. Why? Alright, whatever. Maybe the hermit wasn't crazy. I'm just looking. It doesn't look like you're just looking. It looks like you're having lunch and poking around on the computer. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you worked here. Do I look like a librarian? No, I suppose not. Then again, neither does a librarian. Librarians don't look like librarians? What? Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Just don't get any crispy squirrel bit. Or that. Or whatever that is. Don't get any quis qui crispy squirrel bit. What are you here to study? I'm not here to study. I'm here for work. Oh. I assume not a reader? I read. I'm just busy at the moment. I read in my off time. My dad brought me here for my birthday. I'm going to study as much as I can before we leave. I don't see your dad. Did he drop you off and leave forever? Uh, have you seen that girl? The quiet one? You mean Helen? Why? Yeah, there's something about her. So, it's her biology that you're interested in. Gross! What? Come on. I'm just teasing you. She is very nice, and I agree, she's cute. Do you think I should talk to her? You'll have to talk at her. Maybe I'll just leave her alone then. I think that would be best. Yeah, go ask her to cut your hair. I mean, your hair's pretty short already. <laughs> go ask her to give you a haircut. And she get, can give you more hair. And get rid of that stuff on your chin right there. You think? Yeah, go get him, tiger. Go to the woman. Come on. Twist those dirty bags. Go to the woman! All right, all right. Um, I guess talk to him again. Do you know what a bookmobile is? A bo <laughs> what? <laughs> What, what the hell's a bookmobile? Wait, is Buddy Chicken a bookmobile? Does he have tiny books? He has tiny books? <laughs> this time, I want you to go with Reader. Just Reader. You might like to travel with the friends. Do me a favor and let them take a break. I'm hoping you and Reader will work well together. I have plans. This is sort of trial run. Are you ready? Uh, I I guess we can leave Buddy Chicken and Delilah behind. All right, Buddy Chicken, Buddy Chicken, Buddy Chicken, you need to be in my pocket for just a second. No, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's uncomfortable. I'm, I'll put you in a comfy spot in the backpack next to all the plot items we can't get rid of. Yeah. Hey, you need something? Yeah, I need you to stay here. Great. I'll try to find a good place to read. I hope you find one. Let I, me know. I'm. Lydia, oh Lydia, the encyclopedia. <laughs> Lydia, the tattooed lady. Oh, hey. Uh, hello. Are you uh, ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I heard rumors of an old bookmobile that was uncovered by a dust storm. Right. There could be a treasure trove of books. I would like you and Reader to go and investigate the area. I'm sure you know that you'll be compensated as usual. With magazines, Yay, yes. magazines. Give me the deets. Well, it's a bookmobile. That means books. Lots of books. They've been buried, so they might be in good shape. Let me see your map. There it is. Reader is outside waiting for you. I hope the two of you can get along. Good luck. I'm sure we won't. See you in a day or so. I can't wait to see what you bring back. Probably books. Probably more... Uh, reader, hello. You got the map, and you know where you're going. Shouldn't it be too bad? A wrecked bookmobile? Most likely rad roaches and blowflies, and I've got a general purpose machine gun. Some might call that overkill. You never know. <laughs> you, didn't give us a, you didn't give us a marker. I mean, let me show you where it is on your map. You want to put a marker there? I don't know how this thing works. Yeah, I don't know what the hell this thing is. Uh, there it is. <laughs> um... One of the books that Delilah wanted us to get was, like, On the Road, which, for a second, I thought it was just The Road by Cormac McCarthy, and which is one of the most depressing books I've ever read in my entire <laughs> life. It's a great book, but, God, it's depressing. Oh, jeez, all right. 
Um, basically, it's a post-apocalypse, and it's this guy and his son walking down an abandoned interstate to try to get to somewhere where there's some kind of shelter. And the only thing he has to defend himself is a revolver with two bullets that are for him and his son. I I see. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's real depressing. Well, maybe that's why she wanted that book. Because she was too much of a happy person and she needed something to dampen that. She's like, we live in a post-apocalypse and I just need something that's going to lift me up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All these books are burned. Well, I don't think this bookmobile is really in good shape. I think they're all kind of trashed. Maybe we can find some good pages and smash yeah. them together to make a single good book. Maybe. Might not be coherent. Hey, reader. What's up? Who the hell is Helen? I mean, obviously she's not his daughter. I've known Shakespeare a long time, since Helen was a little girl. I've never heard her speak. And all I've ever gotten out of him was that he got her in some kind of traumatic event. Got to be something more to it than that. You can ask him all about it when we get back. Well, he's very cagey. Maybe he'll tell you. He's not. He's very yeah. cagey. Yeah, maybe he will. Hey, the wondrous and valuable MacGuffin was in the box here. Hey, that's what we're looking for. The well, MacGuffin. The MacGuffin. It's him. It's Alex. Oh, God. God damn it. Again? Really? We're doing this? I'm not here to talk to you. Okay. You'd think not having a nose would come in handy in situations like this. But I have to say, there is a smell. Can we not do another Dante's Inferno reference, please? I already had enough. Can we not do another one, please? I imagine Vonnegut will get that. Uh, great, so there's somebody else named Vonnegut. Are we just all going to be named after authors? Is that where we're all going to... Can I be Dean Koontz? The years will go to Homer again. You do have nice skin, though. I wonder if that smell will come off it. So, you're the new curiosity. I don't know what the hell you guys want from me. Nor should you. Does a worm know why he's on the hook? I d don't try to do some whole H.P. Lovecraft. I, the pigeon doesn't understand what the newspaper is when he stands on it. Perhaps you are not as stupid as you look. We had hoped to catch Shakespeare. Maybe you'll lure him out. See, you know, the way you're looking at me makes me think that you're going to try to eat me. Is that what you're going to do? Zombie? Shut up. Shut up, or I'll kill you. Uh, 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 you'll see. Will that hurt your feelings? <laughs> look at me. I don't want to. Your face is dumb. You got a stupid mustache. I like to get a look at them before Homer gets to them. For comparison. If you're trying to scare me, it's not working. I've been locked in a room with Niner before. I don't know what you said to Ovid, but he's upstairs spitting and coughing all over the place. It's priceless. <laughs> Glad I'm here for the entertainment. I'll be here all week. Make sure you tip your waitresses. Virgil was correct. You stink. Is this a Halloween parade? What the fuck is this? Yes, a Halloween parade. You just sit there and enjoy the show. You are going to love it. Doubt. I mean, you guys know that Shakespeare isn't going to show up here, right? He doesn't even know where the hell the bookmobile is. Is that what you think? He doesn't know where this place is? Who the hell is Shakespeare to you, John Carpenter's They Live looking motherfuckers? I guess that works. I don't know. There's got to be a way for me to make that more concise. You look like one of the aliens from John Carpenter's They Live. That's what I'm trying to say. So, what are you? Shakespeare's pet or something? I don't know. I just I just work for him occasionally. Who the hell are you? Me? I'm Virgil. Not that it matters to you. We don't want you at all. That trap was for Shakespeare. Okay, who's we? How do you know Shakespeare? We better leave that to Aristotle. Uh, can you guys, like, stop switching from one to the other? I'm tired of looking at your faces. <laughs> See ya. Are you alright? They didn't hurt you, did they? I'm named after Mary Shelley. Got it. Why are you being so nice? What did you do to make them so mad at you? I don't know. I didn't do anything. They're after Shakespeare, I guess. 
Do you know Shakespeare? Is this good cop, bad cop? I have a passing knowledge of him. You mean it's true? He's alive. I, I guess. If you call that living. That was unnecessary. Sorry. They told me he was dead. That was 20 years ago. Okay, well, I guess they lied to you. Yes, they did. And they will pay. Cool, great. If you let me go, I can help you make them pay. Will you tell me where Shakespeare is? Uh, sure, why not? Tell me. Will you kill them all? Make sure you get Aristotle. He's in the attic. Well, hang on. I'm still- I still got kaleidoscope vision. Your stuff is in the other room. We'll talk later. Oh man, is this what people who don't have glasses see? Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, it's awful. I hate it. Hooray, you got your stuff back. Not a hotkey at all back over again. God. Uh, Sunset's has real badge. Great. General purpose- Oh, hey! It's all still hotkeyed! Oh, that's a baseball! All right. It's all still hockey! Alright. Oh, yeah! Good stuff. Hey, buddy chicken! Oh, look, it's a boat! <laughs> so, this room right here. Hello! Oh, hey, oh! Ow, ow, ow! Things are on fire! That's not great. I'm one of those things. Oh, I hope that guy wasn't the one I was. Oh, that was. Ow, ow, ow! Oh, sorry, sorry, that was you. I, I forgive you, Fog of War. Man, I'm kind of amazed that you were that you're still alive, considering I put I don't even know how many <laughs> eight mil Mauser rounds into you. I built up an immunity by getting uh, attacked by smaller calipers. That is true. I try to read Homer's Odyssey, and it's just like Bill was a great warrior, and he did lots of cool stuff, but then he got stabbed in the gut, and he fucking died. Anyway, here's John. John was an amazing accountant, and John did lots of math, but all of his money couldn't save him, and he fucking died. Jeez. And it's just page after page after page <laughs> of that. I can't stand it! Can't say I've ever read that book, but I think there might be more to it than that. <laughs> Look at the toy boat! <laughs> Look at the toy boat! Ooh. Ooh. Give me that big book of science. Look at that little toy boat! That's cute. That's a little cute. Yeah. So, I, I, I guess Shelly ran away because uh, we have not seen her. I guess so. Oh! Door to the Mojave Wasteland. Is it done? Okay, she's not out here. Never mind. I guess we'll go back to Shakespeare and let them know what just happened. Yeah. Uh, buddy chicken, meet, meet Mrs. Cactus. I'm what? glad that you're acquainted now. All right. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh, okay, that, that, yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. <laughs> oh god, there's more of them. Let's go. Run, 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 run. Yeah. Run, let's run away. Run away. Not now you know what you're playing. Mike's gonna, Mike's gonna give me, like, this much money. And then it's like, here's 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> You cheap Dutch motherfucker! <laughs> you knew what you were getting into. Ah! Oh, she came running up to me. I thought she was. Gonna, <laughs> I thought she was gonna deliver me a message as a courier, <laughs> and I was about to just be like, Brrr! "Hello." She has nothing Glad to say. Glad you're with us. Ooh. Why aren't you with the patrol? I got a bum leg. I don't feel like it. I got flat feet. <laughs> I'm a lingering. It's a good reason. 